Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a single cask from Carswold's Distillery from England. So now the question of the day is, is it worth it to buy a single cask? They're almost always more expensive, but do they taste better? Hmm. All right, so I'm going to pull out something that is very, very similar to this. This is the Coswold's Founder's Choice. So this is a first fill STR Barrique. That was cast number 705. It is a Germany exclusive, but you can buy it from Le, Le Maison de Whisky in Paris. And um, it's 60.6% .6 ABV, 285 bottles. Over here we have um, the <coughs> Founder's Choice, which are just STR casks. There were 2,800 in this small batch from 02 2018. And this was actually bottled at 60.9%. This cost 55 euros in Germany, 55 euros, 99 euros, 45 euros more. So double the price, more than double, almost double the price. Yeah, so it'd be 110, so almost double the price. 55 versus the 99. So that's really the question is, should you want and should you buy single casks? Now, that's a very good question. If I were to give my opinion of single casks, I'm going to just talk from my personal experience. At the very beginning of my journey trip, my journey um, trip to become a bourbon connoisseur, is what I'm going to call myself now, um, bourbon and, and whiskey connoisseur, sorry. Um, I went on to Facebook back then. That really helped me. There are great groups back then. Um, now it's, a lot of it's going on on WhatsApp and so on. And these people actually helped me to discover, I'm going to say too quickly, the unicorns, the single cast, the high-end stuff. And I did not spend a lot of time tasting these standard core range products. Now, I, I do regret that in many, many cases. So imagine this was my first interaction with Coswolds, a Founder's Choice, 60.9%. I really enjoy this. This is fabulous juice. This is a C++, B- type of whiskey. And if it, this is part of the core range, their standard range now. And then if I go over to their normal core range, I would go, oh, I'm disappointed. Ah, ooh, ee. And that happened to a lot of us. Yeah, imagine one of my first whiskeys was Glen Farkless, 40 years old. And then I, family reserve, family cask. I've had quite a few of those at my friend's house. And then I went on and bought my first bottle of Glen Farkless, 12 year old, and it was like, well, it's not the same now, is it? And it's always better to work your way up than to work your way down with whiskey. And that's the question here. Who should be buying these single casks? There's 285 of them for all the world, for Germany in this case. And when the barrel's gone, it's gone. And the next barrel's going to taste a little bit different and a little bit different and so on. I think the same thing holds true for almost any type of whiskey that we should, at the beginning of our trip, make sure we taste some of those standard core range products and then move our way up to the single barrels. Don't move too fast. I know everyone would like, I want the best, the quickest, the best at now at this moment. But sometimes it's good to kind of pace yourself and have a plan. I had a plan to learn all about whiskey in about nine months. Six years later, I'm still learning all about whiskey. <laughs> I'm actually going to be at a distillery tomorrow and help them actually distill whiskey here in Germany, which is, wow, I, that's going to be one of my first times I've done that. And there you, can, you can learn and you can process and you can gain experience and you can understand that. And I can use this experience now to educate others. But imagine we started off the very tippy top and then we had to go back down and it's always a disappointment. All right, so now the question is, if I were in Germany and I had $100, 100 euros in my pocket burning hole in it, would I actually go for this or would I go for this with 55 euros? To be very honest, from the value for money, this is hands down the winner. There is hardly a whiskey out there above 60% for 55 euros 
that I can recommend. I can't buy Booker's over here for 55 euros. I can't buy Elijah Craig over here for 50 euros. I'm paying, I'm paying at least 10 to 20 euros more for that stuff. Yes, I can buy Eagle, not Eagle Rare. Yes, I can buy Wild Turkey Rare Breed for a less uh, um, a price, which is less, but still it's not above 60. It's still, it's only at the 50s. Mm. All right, so on the nose, I like this. The first thing that I realize is, wait a second, I'm sniffing very, very hard on 60.6% and nothing's happening. That whiskey is so well integrated. This is 20 euros per year, people. Is it the most expensive bottle I own? No, per year, per year, per year, uh, per dollar, per euro. But it's over my, t it's twice the price I would normally be paying for something like that. And that's something I always have to consider and remember. All right, over here. They're within 80% of each other. This is, it does have the nose uh, a little bit forward, is a little bit ahead of the pack here. Here I have more car caramel. Here I have a little bit more of a multi mint moment. And here I have a little bit more of the sharpness of the alcohol, 60.9%. Here, less of the alcohol. Here I have my raspberries and I have watermelon. I don't think I've ever had watermelon as I do with this. I like. I like this a lot. Well done, people. All right. Cheers. Mmm. Swallow. Just tiny little bit on the on the sides of my tongue that I get the alcohol, and then it goes up. I love it when a whiskey just ah. I hate it when a whiskey just deteriorates. I love it when it improves, and I get this weird, unique, awesome raspberry watermelon jive going on here. It's got a lot of caramel. It's got a little bit of sweetness. Um, it's got a little bit of alcohol, but not much compared to the, what I was expecting from a 60.6% um, thing over here. These STR casks can be amazing. Wow, very, very nice. This is a B minus whiskey. Solid B minus. Now, in comparison to this over here, our Founder's Choice. The brief story of Coswolds is an American made a lot of money in London at the financial markets, basically cashed out one of the Coswolds. Coswolds is a little bit the, um, what is the vineyards there? Um, Martha's Vineyards, basically, of, um, of the UK, one of the best places to relax and have a family and so on. He bought a farm. And then he said, I'm bored. I'm going to start a distillery. Asked Dr. Jim Swan to come over to consult him. And he put some more money in the distillery. And now we have Coswolds. Just within the last two weeks or a week or so, um, he actually now stepped down as the new CEO. CEO. He is now going to be the um, supervisory board, whatever that is. All right. Good. The very, very, very shortened story here of Coswolds. I like Coswolds. I don't like all the products, but I really do like them. And one day I might visit you. Who knows? You're not on the path of any places I'm going to go in the near future, unfortunately. That's not true, is it? Huh. Yeah, I just Googled. I actually have a, a very good acquaintance. We don't say friends over in Germany unless you've actually spent 20 years of your life together. Um, down in Heath. Um, um, and so it's only an hour and 45 minutes away. So actually that's close than I had expected. All right. So who knows? Maybe uh, one day I might make it up there to cause waltz. All right. Very, very good. I'm going to give this here a, um, mm -hmm. mm. every day of the week, the alcohol is more present. It's a, still a, a C plus plus whiskey. This is the B minus whiskey, much, much better. So the question of the day is, are single casks worth it? Are they worth almost double the price, even though this is 69.9, this is 60.9, this is 60.6, five years, no age statement. 
Um, the interesting thing about single casks is every once in a while you can get a birthday bourbon. I always say bourbon, birthday whiskey. So this is, for example, if you had a child born on the 17th of uh, July 2016, or you were born on the 17th of July, this would be, hey, this was made on my birthday, yay! Um, those are special things you can do. You can actually go to Whiskey Base, you can type in a date, and it'll show you all the bottles that were actually either um, distilled on that date or bottled on that date, and you can try to look and find one of those. Very, very interesting. People like doing that. I actually gave my boys both of a whiskey, not from the birth date, but from the birth year. I can't do that anymore. I'm over 50. It's going to be way too expensive. Um, but they at least have something. And I told them they can open it up on their wedding day or after the wedding or at the birth of their first child, which I would prefer. I want to become a grandparent soon. All right. So question of the day, which cause wolves do you like the best? And second question of the day is what whiskey over 60%? That's not a bourbon. Can you recommend? Um, don't forget, I can get the this one cheaper um, than I can Elijah Craig. I can get it cheaper than I can a Booker's, for example. Um, and much cheaper than a stag, <laughs> for example. All right, thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing. Any other whiskeys from England you can recommend? Write them down also in the chat, in the, in the, chat, in the comments. Um, Coswold's good distillery. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking, subscribing, telling others, and maybe even sharing. Good whiskey. Unfortunately, 285 bottles only in Germany. Bye-bye. Thank you.